Welcome to First Christian Church, Disciples of Christ, here in Bardstown, Kentucky. We are so glad that we can join together in worship. We invite you to celebrate with us as we worship God. We'd also invite you, if you would like to get some crackers and juice, water, coffee, something to share in communion a little later in our service. Here in our tradition, we believe that all are children of God and all are welcome to share in communion. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worshiping God. church family. We would like to introduce you to the newest member of the Metcalf family. This is Caden Patrick Anthony Metcalf. And now we would like to do the call to worship. 
Let us now praise God for mothers and all who love as mothers. Let us give thanks for mothers, aunts, grandmothers, sisters, and cousins. Thank you, God. We praise God for young mothers and old mothers, for first-time mothers and experienced mothers, for teen mothers and third-world mothers. Thank you, God. For adoptive mothers and spiritual mothers and all whose love is like that of mothers. For mothers who nurture and feed the world, for those who love all children as children of God. Thank you, God. Let us pray. O oh God of love and compassion, we are thankful for the women in our lives who love and care for us. We are thankful for those who mother us and teach us to know you. We know that even though we cannot gather in worship, you are with each of us wherever we are praising you. Be with us and help us through this time. Hear us now as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And it is not temptation, but deliver us from evil. For God is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Bye. Amen. chapter 1 verse 17 every good gift and every perfect gift is from above Come, coming down from the father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow due to its change the gifts of God are gifts often in the shape of people these gifts he gives us special people like moms grandmothers and friends to love us and raise us with kindness do you see this box? Inside this box is a gift more valuable than gold and silver, more expensive than jewels or fast, a fast car. 
inside this box, I have my loving aunt who is always there to support me. My amazing grandmother who always cares about me and buys me breakfast right now from on and Fridays. And my mom who is always there to support me. But I'm not done yet. I also have the amazing women of FCC DOC because these women and ladies who love God and taught me all about Him, you are more precious than any gift I've ever received. Thank you so much. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for giving me these amazing gifts. Dear God, we thank you for Jesus. Dear, Dear God, God, we, we thank, thank you, you for the children. children. Amen. Amen. Thank you. As we come to our time of offering, we'd like to remind everyone that you can mail your check into the church, uh, drop it off, we can meet you at the door to let us know you're coming, or you could give online as listed by the information that will appear below. We understand that there are some of you out there laid off uh, at this time, and also have just to let you know that if you are in need, please let us know. We'd be happy to help you in any way that we can and direct you to resources that are available in our area. Let us take this and every opportunity to give generously from what God has given to each and every one of us. Let us pray. Almighty, most wonderful God, we are thankful for every gift that you provide, the beauty of this earth that you have placed us upon, the wonder of your creation, how you continue to provide through your bounty even through these troubling times. We give you thanks for what has been given this day, these tithes, 10% givings, love offerings, and sacrificial gifts. We use them to dedicate your will to this world that it may be done as you see fit. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. As we come together in a time of prayer, we have a few people to keep on our prayer list today. We want to keep Laura and Josh and all of their family in our prayers today. Laura was pregnant and lost their baby at 18 weeks this past week. We also would like to keep Brittany and her husband Brandon and all of their family on our prayer list. Um, Brittany's brother, Rhett McKnight, passed away. He was put on hospice care and died this past Thursday evening. We also would like to keep the mother of Ahmad, the African-American young man who was attacked and killed while jogging. We also ask that you keep Pat, the husband of Pam. He is having more tests and then starting radiation therapy soon. We've also been asked to keep Aaron, who is having serious health issues from West Nile virus, on our prayer list. He is the son of Jane and Chris. We'll also be praying for our graduates this week. We also would like to share this with you. Um, Anne Updegraff Spleth wrote it. She's a pastor in Indiana. She said, joy to you if you are a mother, peace to you if you've lost your mother or a child, courage to you if you long to be a mother, comfort to you if the mother you had was not the mother you needed. This Sunday, commonly called Mother's Day, is a Sunday of mixed emotions. Some do not celebrate mothers, others do. 
Some have lost children or can't have children. Others have plenty of children. We also come with other losses due to this pandemic. The loss of that closeness with family and friends, the postponement of weddings and graduations and other big events in life. But we also come with a better sense of caring through cards and calls, text and emails, Zoom and other online ways of reaching out. With these mixed feelings in our hearts, let us turn to God in prayer. Oh God, we come this Mother's Day with mixed feelings. Some who have lost their mothers early continue to grieve. Some who did not have a mother who loved them as they needed also grieve. Others celebrate the gift of the mother in their life especially those who are still with them. And others, oh God, while we have mothers with us, cannot be physically with them on this day. We give you thanks, oh God, not only for those mothers who have been part of our lives at home, but for the mothers who care for us in this church family, the many ways they take care of us, they have reached out with love and compassion to those who need it. We give thanks for those who mother as aunts and sisters and cousins, and even as fathers and brothers. We thank you, O oh God, for the nurturing care that we can share with one another. We lift up to you, O oh God, Laura and Josh and their family on the loss of their baby and pray that you will comfort them, that you will be with them and hold them close. We pray also, O oh God, for the family of Rhett. We pray for Brittany and Brandon and all of their family in this loss. We pray also, O oh God, for the mother of Ahmad, the young man attacked and killed simply for jogging and being African-American. We pray for him, O oh God. We pray for those who would have too much prejudice in their hearts to just see a person. We pray that you will open the eyes of their hearts. We pray also, O oh God, for Pat, Pam's husband, as he has more tests, and starts his radiation therapy. And we pray for Aaron with health issues from West Nile virus, for his wife and children, and for his parents, Jane and Chris. We pray, oh God, for all of our graduates this week and in the coming weeks who are not able to graduate as they dreamed of doing, but we pray, oh God, that you will be with them helping them to celebrate their accomplishments in new and different ways. We thank you, O oh God, for the ability to stay close to one another through calls and text, finding new ways to reach out in care and in love. It's in the name of your Son that we pray this day. Amen.
Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on earth. Vision 6, 1 through 3. When God blessed us with our son Jacob, what a joy it meant. The joy to be his mother, to be able to wipe away his tears, celebrate his happiness, and listen to his concerns. And to know I will always be his mother. Happy Mother's Day. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. Proverbs 31:25. I'm Chrissy and I am a mother of one and I have another one on the way. I'm about 36 weeks pregnant. And right now I'm kind of in that nesting phase. And I heard someone say today that uh, mothers also have a natural instinct to do a nesting of the soul. And I think a part of that for me is like the scripture, scripture says to be, have that ability to laugh at the days to come. Uh, and, and that's a, a sense of strength. I think that we all have as well that's given to us to be able to cope and um, with, with the things that kind of come out of nowhere that we can't prepare for, but and to also be present in those really just simple moments, but important moments, and to be just there with our family and our children and allow us to learn from them and laugh with them. So that's what that scripture um, said to me today. My scripture today comes from Proverbs chapter 31, verses 25 and 26. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of her kindness is on her tongue. First and foremost, I want to wish a happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. Biological mothers, foster moms, stepmoms, adoptive moms, grandmas, aunts, fur mamas, church mamas, spiritual mamas, and anyone who lost their, has lost their mom. God created each of us as a masterpiece because each of us are unique. Each of us have a unique thumbprint, eye print, footprint, voice print, and heartbeat. You were born by his purpose and for his purpose. My footprint and thumbprint, like everyone else's, is different, including from my twin sister, Clandra. A thumbprint identifies you as your own person. All mothers and all people leave some sort of print on everybody. We especially leave our thumbprints or our prints, footprints on our children. Leaving a thumbprint or a footprint leaves a lasting impression and is always one of a kind. So no matter what type of person you are, biological, step, foster, adoptive, aunt, friend, spiritual mom, always know you leave a lasting print on someone's heart. Thumbprints can have very many differences and many similarities. My thumbprint is I'm a child of God. I'm accepted. I am loved. I am beautiful. I am secure, I am never alone, I am chosen, and I am blessed. I guarantee half of our church or more wear glasses at some point, have had contacts or wear contacts, or have had laser surgery. Each person sees a mom differently. Often in life, it is not what you see, but how you see mothering acts. Mothering is what truly matters. Several years ago, I sat in our very church, wondering why I was unable to have children. At that time, I also saw another young mother of our church who recently had a miscarriage. 
That day was when I saw what mothering was defined for me. My sister in Christ, who had recently gone through that miscarriage, was provided a flower for being a mother. Also at that time, Brian McCormick, the youth minister from years ago, made a video from the youth that questioned the youth on their definition of mothers and mother-like figures. As a childless woman, this day, meaning Mother's Day, previously had been hard on me to the point on multiple occasions I had considered not even coming to church for the day just because of the pain and the emotional pain it inflicted on me. However, from that year on, I became a better person and I had a better understanding of Mother's Day. Some of the youth, Haley Harned, Ben Livers, Daniel Livers, Allison Barnes, mentioned I was a mother to them. At that point, I had never realized or thought I was a mother figure. After that church service, I had time to sit back and reflect. Yes, I was a mother figure, and I love and loved all of those kids that I have taught for many years in Sunday school, vacation Bible school, youth groups, and mission trips. I have been truly blessed and am thankful that you all have allowed me to be part of their past and present. My main takeaway regarding uh, your eye print is that love is in the eye of the beholder. These kids that I grew up at that time loved me as an adopted church mom and made me feel at that point that I was a mother. I have loved each of you children that I have worked with uh, past and present. Always remember to love thy neighbor. And the scripture that comes to mind for me comes from Psalms 119 verse 8. It says, open my eyes that I might see the wondrous things of your law. And then if you have time after the sermon, also listen to the song, uh, Open My Eyes of the Heart, Lord. Your voice. Your voice print is something that as a mother is what a child hears for the very first time. After birth, your mom's voice is what provides you comfort and peace. I know at 39 years, oh, 39 years old, still to this day, my mom's voice always puts my mind at ease. She always has that calming voice. A scripture that came to mind when I thought about a voice is, comes from Proverbs chapter 16, verse 24. Kind words are like honey, sweet to the soul. Your heart print. To me, this is simple. Your heart print means love. Love comes from within. The scripture that I often go to when I think of the heart or think of love uh, for children uh, is 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 3 through 4. It is not your fancy hair, gold jewelry, fine clothes that should make you beautiful. No, your beauty should come from inside you, the beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit that likely will never disappear, and it's worth very much. In the end, I wish all you mothers out there a happy Mother's Day, especially my mom. Pray and celebrate your mom, your mom-like figures in your life. God bless each and every one of you all. I love my church family, and I love my brothers and sisters in Christ, and I hope to see you all soon. 
As we are all sitting in the comfort of our own homes, I want to pose a question for each and every one of you. Who are the women in your life who have mothered you? While you sit and listen to this message, I'm sure many of you can name more than just your mom. Webster Dictionary defines a mom, AKA mother, as one, a female parent, especially one of the human race, a woman who has born a child, and two, that which has produced and or nurtured anything, source of birth or origin. I bet 100% of you, the first woman who comes to mind is that the woman you refer to as mom. Rightfully so. After all, she's the one who brought us into the world, the woman who gave us our first breath. But I began to think outside the box. Who really defines a mother? I believe we do, but most of all, I believe God places women in our life to guide us down the right path. I've been told many times throughout my life, it takes a village to raise children. This really didn't mean anything to me until I had children of my own. And when I think of my childhood, I have many mothers, women who celebrated my birth, women who helped understand God's love, women who helped comfort me when I needed it, women who took time away from their own families to spend time with me, women who love me unconditionally. So as I sat down to prepare my message, a flood of memories swirled in my head. For these memories of love, I am thankful for. Memories of my grandma riding in the back of granddaddy's truck. Memories of shopping with my nanny. Memories of my mom bandaging me up after my big wheel accident. Memories of Mrs. Shepherd giving me a hug every Sunday. Memories of Mama Jean playing the organ at the old church and always opening her arms to me after church services. Memories of Mrs. Roby teaching us the Whirly Bird curriculum. Memories of Mama P calling us her grandchildren. Memories of our neighbor, Miss Emily, baking muffins in her kitchen. I'm also reminded of the love and comfort David Carringer gave me after the miscarriage of my first pregnancy. Many of you are probably thinking a man, but in that time of my life, he, yes he, brought comfort to me like a mom. These are just to name a few. There are millions of feelings and thought, thousands of thoughts that go along with these memories. Sadness, happiness, laughter, joy, and excitement. The only real treasures are the love of the Lord and the memories in your head. These two things nobody can steal from you. The scripture taken from Isaiah 66 verse 13 reminds us just of that. As if as one his mother comforts, so I will comfort you. And after all, remember the comfort of God's love through John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Happy Mother's Day. Hi, I'm Brenda Alexander, and I've got to share a scripture uh, that was reflective of uh, how I mothered my children. And the scripture I selected was Proverbs chapter 22, verse six. Start children off in the way they should go, and even when they are old, they will not turn from it. That is true for myself, is that my mother was an example of sharing her faith with us when we were young. And she was involved in a, a small role country church and we were raised in that church and my faith became important to me and so when our children were small we were active in church and um, helped them grow up in churches as well which helped to give them a foundation of faith that uh, they could think and reason and develop an individual relationship with God um, through the years. And um, not only involving them in church, but showing as an example uh, in the household and uh, our service to others in the community and opening our home to others uh, as, uh, as we have over the years. and. I still see my children today having their own relationship with God and hopefully 
our children. We'll share that with their, our grandchildren as we have and uh, our grandchildren's children. Every week we like to give everyone an opportunity to invite Christ into their lives. If you feel you wish to accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, please do so. And please let us know. We'd be happy to guide you to make that all-important decision that will affect the rest of your life here on earth and the rest of your life to come when this life is over. Please contact us on Facebook or give us a call. We'd love to hear from you. We also like to invite everyone to prepare yourselves, your hearts and minds for our time of communion that will be separate but together in the Spirit. As we gather for communion, let us pray. Jesus, you shared peace around a table of anxiety. Peace with the bread, peace with the wine, peace in the face of the uncertain, peace in the place of pain. May we share tables of peace in places of pain, sharing food and friendship and words and life because you came to a fearful world and found your place around those tables. Amen. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took the lo a loaf of bread, and when he had given <clears throat> things, he broke it and said, This is my body, that, that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way he took the cup also, after supper saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup you will proclaim the lord's death until he comes we thank you for joining us in worship today and we would invite you to stand as you're able for the benediction and our response, which is blessed be the tie that binds. And we thank our acolytes as they come up, you'll see them taking the light of Christ back out into the world. Let us pray. Let us be of good courage, holding fast to that which is good. Let us render to no one evil for evil. May we strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honor all people, love and serve God, and rejoice in the power of the Holy Spirit, the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. <laughs>